This is truly overall just the best crew that I've had as far back as I can remember. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest and to the point narrated trip reports about flights and hotels all over the world. This is episode 131 in business class on Swiss International Airlines, the 27th airline featured on the channel. The full trip report begins in 10 seconds. Welcome to Zurich. I just landed a few moments ago on my flight from Amsterdam. Zurich is, I think, one of the most beautiful airports in Europe, and Swiss has a storied history that we'll get into. But first, if you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid, or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. I haven't transited through Zurich in over a decade, but I'm happy to see that it was just as organized, well-designed, and poised as I remembered it to be. As we head out onto the balcony overlooking the tarmac, a quick riddle before we head to the lounge. What do gentle king cobras and sponsored unbiased reviews have in common? Well, both of them don't exist. Imagine if Swiss was paying me to take this flight, and then I turned around and presented this video as if it was an unbiased review. It's a farce that happens far too often, and that precisely is why this video is unsponsored. Today, you're going to hear my own personal, honest opinion about the experience and nothing more, because this flight was 100% self-funded. If you like and support authentic travel reviews, please give this channel a sub and check out my Patreon in the description below. Y'all are the sponsors of this video, so a big thank you in advance for stopping by. Alright, time to head to the lounge, which is a bit weird to me. Sharing and entrance are the Swiss Business Class Lounge and the Swiss Senator Lounge. The distinction between the two, which Lufthansa also implemented, has always confused me. Singapore, Singapore Airlines that is, also separates Business Class passengers from Star Alliance Gold passengers on economy tickets. But for Singapore, the Silver Crisp Business Class Lounge is the one that's more prestigious. Here, the opposite is true, as Lufthansa and Swiss First Class members also use the Senator Lounge. In the end though, it really doesn't make a difference as from what I could see, both lounges were a mirrored copy of each other, with just locking glass doors in the middle. I was flying business class and I have Star Alliance Gold, so I suppose that's why the very friendly lounge check-in agent didn't point me in any particular direction, since I could access either one of them. The lounge is beautifully Swiss with four primary zones. First, the food zone, which had a limited but quality selection of food and copious amounts of booze and coffee and bistro-style seating. Next was the main seating area behind, with brown leather chairs which were very comfortable but it got very busy at times. The third area, which I really enjoyed, was the quiet area, just a level above, which also had lots of lounge chairs and black leather sofas, and it just made for a very nice place to spend a few hours and get some work done. I also very much appreciate how comprehensive the outlets at each seat were. Australians, Kiwis, South Africans, and Indians were still out of luck though. Alright, time to head to the gate on an evening where lots of flights were delayed, though mostly by just 15 or 30 minutes. I appreciate that they do keep the board so updated. All of those waiting passengers certainly weren't at the B gates though. Our aircraft today, I believe the second oldest plane in Swiss's fleet, is a 27-year-old Airbus A321-100 series, originally delivered to Swissair in 1995. After Swissair's bankruptcy, she spent some years at Turkish Airlines before returning to Swiss in 2007. Alright, let's check out today's stats. We'd be taking off a bit over an hour late and heading up to 37,000 feet for our two-hour flight down to Athens, landing around 40 minutes behind schedule. Boarding was, as you'd imagine in Switzerland, orderly and automated. A few words about Swiss's history. Swissair and Swiss International Airlines are not the same airline. Swissair went bankrupt in 2002, and many of its assets were transferred or sold to Crossair, which was Swissair's separate regional partner. Crossair then rebranded to Swiss International Airlines 
and kept their old IATA code, which is why Swiss flights are designated as LX. Coming out of bankruptcy, the leadership team knew that in order to maintain a sizable flag carrier, they'd probably need to be part of a larger airline group, and so talks with the big three, Air France KLM, British Airways, and Lufthansa began. Lufthansa agreed to buy Swiss, with the takeover completing in July of 2007. Since the takeover, Lufthansa has positioned Swiss as a smaller, premium brand within their group. As we step on board, let's take a look around. You'll notice that the cabin interior is near identical to the Edelweiss A320 I flew down from Amsterdam on. The only two differences here are that the Swiss seats don't have headrests or entertainment device holders. Strange to think that the Edelweiss plane was better outfitted, but it's not a problem for a short two-hour flight. Legroom was better here though, I'd estimate at around 33 to 34 inches of pitch. Service began with a bottle of water and a wet wipe, and I began to get a feel for one of the best crews that I think I've ever had. Pushback began, and the flight attendants serving the business class cabin were genuinely thrilled that there was someone on board filming everything and set up to film the takeoff. And then all of the goodies came. I'll take a closer look at them after takeoff. So this crew was great for three reasons. They had a great conversational service style, super attentive and accommodating, the purser spoke six languages, and of course the free stuff. But I'll note about the goodies. I get this occasionally after some crew see that I'm filming. If and when it happens, I just watch to see, do the crew interact with every other guest in the cabin the exact same way? If it's the same as with me, then it, they're a great crew. If it's not the same, then I don't mention the free stuff. In today's case, they very much treated everyone the same. I do have to point out though, that having two crew for three passengers in business class probably had a bit to do with it. But they were just so excited to be going to Greece. They were only overnighting, but you would think that they were going to Mykonos for a week's vacation. Just an all around really lovely crew. After a nice tour of the airport, we were lined up and ready to take off to the Northwest before turning around and heading to the Southeast. The spool up and take off are next. And here you can see the airport in the distance as we will fly just south of it. It was pretty quiet up here and considering how old this aircraft is, it's maintained impeccably. Service started with a glass of wine and some crackers. On a clear day, the first 20 minutes of this flight would have spectacular views of the Alps, but we managed just to get a few minutes peak. The crew anticipated that I'd want to take a photo of the wine, so they just gave me the bottle. And a pretty nice wine that it was. At $18 a bottle retail, that's pricier than you'll find on a lot of long haul business class flights these days. For dinner, there was a choice of a roasted chicken with rice or a vegetable ratatouille. I went for the chicken. When I mentioned how I enjoyed the chicken served cold on my recent Air France flight because I'd rather have cold juicy chicken than warm dry chicken, well, this is the one that I was talking about. Everything was nice and good quality, but the chicken was just dry as a bone. The cheese and the plum cake were very good though. 
After dinner, a few more pieces of chocolate, because how many is too much? And a look at what I was given. The plush and sticker book I would expect a full-service airline to have for kids, but I was impressed that they normally cart around branded USB drives and massive chocolate bars. All will be going into my collection. A quick look at the retro but pristine bathroom. And then it was already time to begin our descent into a very dark Athens, approaching the airport from the north. Unfortunately, Swiss leaves the lights on when landing in the dark, so I didn't have any great night shots. A quick taxi later and we were at our gate, but we would be using stairs and taking buses to the other terminal, which I never complain about. Ten minutes later, I was enjoying the fresh Greek air on my way to my hotel. Let's head into the flip-flop score. Overall, it was a great flight and lounge experience made all the better by a genuine and lovely crew who deserve raises. I really hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss a beat. I'll see you next time at the Athens Capital Center Hotel, part of the M Gallery Collection.